The Bad Kids Festival, written by N.B. Atlas. On a warm Tuesday night in 1971, Tamara put on her best Sunday clothes and climbed out of her bedroom window. Her foster brother, Jax, was asleep peacefully in his bed on the other side of the room, his glasses neatly placed on his bedside table, his dark hair messy from tossing and turning as Tamara's pretty dress shoes hit the dirt below their shared bedroom window. She heard the soft sound of a rock shifting beneath her weight, and she held her breath for a long moment. When nothing happened, she drew her hands away from the window seal and crept away from the small white house she lived in near the edge of Rogue Web, Texas. The moment she stepped off of the grass and her shoe hit the gravel street, a firefly buzzed before her nose. It whizzed in a circle around her head, buzzing by her ear, and she struggled to keep her eyes on it. She lifted her hands to catch it, but before her fingers could clasp around the insect, its light zoomed away down the street without uh, so much as a second thought. Tamara ran after it as fast as she could, grinning and stifling her giggles. Down the street she went, the gravel melting into asphalt, the houses getting closer together, and the distant giggles of other children reminded her of her goal to find the festival. The golden light of the firefly turned left, so did Tamara. Me. Her face was flushed, her breath heavy, and her legs tired, but she was desperate to follow the light. She kept her pace, her eyes on her prize, her arms stretching out towards it. She leaped over rocks and fences nearly tripping once but forcing herself back up with a grunt and a huff. Finally, when she entered a field of corn, she was sure she was gaining on it. At first, she wondered if it was just her hoping too hard, but no. As she dodged around corn stalks, she could tell she was getting closer. She forced herself to run faster than she thought she could, her arms out and fingers spread wide to finally capture the little glowing bug she had chased so far for so long. Just when she was sure she could catch it, around it, it it completely disappeared as she ground to a halt. Nearly slipping in the dirt and running her Sunday clothes, she stood still in the dark of the night. The stalks of corn surrounding her forever in all sides. Her breathing was so loud and heavy and she felt stickly and sweaty. She swallowed her spit and looked around herself. But she saw nothing but the dark silhouettes of the corn disappearing into a distance. Though the moon shone bright and it was a clear night, she felt that not enough light was penetrating the leaves over her head. She felt her chest tighten and her eyes began to sting and she lifted her finger to bite down hard on her knuckles as she spun around a few times desperate to get her bearings. Then she heard it. At first she wasn't sure what it was but after a few seconds she realized it was a tune. 
Music was playing somewhere. The sound getting closer and closer, though Tamara stayed still. Her face stained with tears. She moved towards the noise, pushing at the stalks around her in an attempt to see where it came from. As she went, she slowly began to see fireflies again, but there were many of them, and not an of them seemed keen on leading her anywhere. She kept following the joyful sound as it began to blend with children's laughter, the smell of fresh popcorn, the clapping of hands in time to the rhythm. When she finally broke through the thick wool of corn stalks, she looked up to see a large, freshly painted red barn in front of her. Decorated to glow golden with fairy lights and streamers. Children were running in and out, laughing and playing and dancing, some holding popcorn and candy, and others holding balloons. By the door stood a teenage girl, dressed in a white button-down shirt and a red vest, black slacks and dress shoes, bow tie, top hat, and a cane to tie it all together. Grinning joyfully at everyone who ran past, inevitably that grin fell upon Tamara. The girl smiled and raised a finger to beckon her closer. The girl knelt before Tamara, her eyes shining green, crinkled at the corners with glee. Well, howdy there, little princess. It's so nice to see a new little face here among all these friends. May I ask for your name? Tamara. She replied, and the girl smiled. Tamara, that's a lovely name. Do you mind if I call you Tammy? When the little one nodded, the girl's grin got even bigger. Tammy, you've dressed up so nicely to come and visit us. I am so, so happy. She clasped her gloved hands together, bringing them to her chest. I'm known as the Barker around these parts. I'm the one who takes attendance, makes sure everyone is here and having a good time before the games begin. I bet you just can't wait, huh? I can see it in you. Your little heart is just pounding with excitement, isn't it? The Barker reached out, walking her fingers up Tammy's arm, and then poking her on the left side of her chest. Tammy giggled, her tongue sticking out between her teeth. Alright, Tammy, I want you to go in and have some fun, okay? The Barker soothed Tammy's hair with a gentle touch. Remember to be a good kid at all times. Good kids get a prize at the end of the night placing a firm hand on Tammy's back. The Barker led her into the barn. The inside was even brighter than Tammy could have imagined. The walls were painted brightly with cute pictures of sheep and pigs and chickens and cows. Streamers hung from the ceiling in every color. The smell of cotton, candy, and fairy dust lingered in the air. It was filled with children all between the ages of five and ten. Everyone was laughing and cheering, not a frown on a single face. There were popcorn stands and a man handing out candy, another man handing out balloons. She heard someone walking by say something about a petting zoo, and oh, it felt magical. She couldn't decide where to go first, her eyes as big as dinner plates, as she took it all in, suddenly, she made up her mind. She wanted a lollipop. She hurried across the hay-covered floor to the back of the crowd surrounding the candy man. He laughed along with each child while everyone else waited patiently for their turn, as a good kid would. 
though it felt like ages. Finally, his shiny eyes laid on her. What would you like, Tammy? He asked, leaning towards her. Giggling, she pointed at the lollipop sticking out of the cart. And he turned to see... With a heartly chuckle, Oh, a marvelous choice! What flavor? Tammy picked cherry. And as he handed the treat to her, the candy man winked. You be a good girl, alright? Then he turned to the next child, a little boy with chocolate around his lips. Tammy walked away. When she got a bit closer to the back of the barn, Tammy saw there was a petting zoo. There were baby piglets and bunny rabbits, puppies and kittens, and chicks and fawns. She looked at it from afar for a moment, utterly astonished, then ran over as fast as she could. The chicks were like cotton balls in her hands. The bunnies were softer than clouds. The puppies tumbled and played and tried to get her to play too. And the kins climbed up on her clothes as she kissed their heads. She sat crisscross on the ground and a baby piglet settled on her lap. And she found it so cute she didn't want to move or disturb it. So she sat there for a bit licking at her lollipop which was absolutely scrumptious and watching everyone laugh and run and play and shovel popcorn into their open mouths. Is this your first time at the Bad Kids Festival? A voice asked her. She turned around to see a little boy tying to her. His skin was dark and he wore a dress shirt, nice brown slacks and suspenders, shiny shoes. He came over and crouched beside her. You just came here, huh? Don't you live with the Owens down on with me Lane? Tammy nodded as he clicked his tongue. You're their newest foster kid, huh? Another nod. I've been with them for a few weeks now, she told him. How'd you hear about the festival? Jax told me, she replied. He said there was a carnival nobody remembers until it's time to go. I don't get what he means, though. He means what he said, the boy replied with an eye roll. Something funny goes on in everyone's heads around the time of the festival. Nobody really mentions it. Maybe we're all just afraid to. What happens? Tammy leaned forward and the sleepy piglet on her lap shift. The boy seemed to think for a moment before sitting down crisscross next to her. Once you leave, you forget everything that happened, he told her. All you remember by the next morning is that you went and had fun while you were there. No details. Until a whole year goes by? Uh-huh, he nodded. Then one night everyone comes running out into the cornfields and we end up here. I've heard people say they come looking for this place afterwards, but nobody's ever found it. He sighed and pushed some hay around his index finger, focusing his gaze on that. I'm really sorry they're like that. The Owens, I mean, he said. They have a, a new kid each month. It seems like, except for Jax, he's been here as long as I can remember. He shifted his weight slightly. He just turned 11 this year, though how old are you? I'm six, Tammy answered him, and he seemed surprised. Six? I thought you were at least eight, huh? Another click of his tongue. I'm nine, he said. So next year will be my last year getting to come to the festival. 
Tammy furrowed her brow. How come? The boy groaned. Don't tell me Jax didn't tell you. You can't come here after you turn 11. The fireflies won't guide anybody older than 10. They just won't. He picked up some pieces of hay on the ground and started trying to make a circle with them. Say, some kids say you forget all about it after a while, but I don't believe them. How can you forget the Bad Kids Festival? The two of them looked around at the barn full of ecstatic children on sugar highs, clapping and dancing, playing tag, throwing fistfuls of hay from the hay bales in the corner. There was so much joy in the air that Tammy told herself she couldn't ever forget what it felt to like be right there at that moment. Hey, the boy said, you ever wonder why everybody calls it the Bad Kids Festival? Tammy turned her head to look at him and he continued, I mean, everyone who works here tells you the same thing. They tell you to be good. They tell you to be patient and polite and gentle and kind, all that stuff. But then they name the whole event like we're all bad kids. We aren't bad at all. The bad ones get weeded out anyway. So why name it like that? Tammy hummed and thought, then furrowed her brow. What do you mean, weeded out? The boy got very quiet very quickly. I don't know, he said. I just said it without even thinking about it. Though she was confused, the topic made Tammy uncomfortable, and suddenly she didn't want to know any more. The piglet crawled off her lap, then she pushed herself up. The boy rose too. Come on, he said. Let's go get balloons. Tammy learned that the boy's name was Trevin and that he preferred vanilla over chocolate ice cream. He also preferred pink to blue as a color. So that's the color balloon. He got tied to his wrist. Tammy chose purple to get her. The two of them enjoyed the festival. And up until all the lights went out very suddenly, leaving everyone in the dark. Tammy reached out the latched onto Trevin's arm, swallowing hard. A soft and uneasy murmur went over the crowd. A click sounded and a spotlight came on. Suddenly, there was a stage where the barn doors had once stood, and on that stage stood none other than the Barker. She twirled her cane in her hand and grinned to the crowd of children before her. Is everybody ready to play the Barker? She called, her voice loud and jovial, and the children responded with a roar of approval that made her toss her head back in laughter. That's great. I'm so glad to hear it. Now everybody sit down. On command, everyone sat down on their spot, crossing their legs or leaning against friends. The barker hummed. Now, the rules of the barker's game are simple. Just stand up when I say th that's it. Doesn't that sound easy? There was a murmur of agreement and the barker pouted. That doesn't sound like everybody's ready. The crowd roared upwards, waving their arms and clapping, and a few older kids whistled faintly. That grin resurfaced on the Barker's face. 
All right, everybody. Round one. If you like going to school, please stand up. The barker excitedly raised an arm, and the crowd began to boo. Placing a gloved hand on her chest, she recoiled in shock. You're all telling me you don't like school? She cried, and the crowd responded with various forms of yeah and yes. She sighed, tapping her chin and twirling her cane in one hand. She hummed softly, pacing back and forth on the stage a bit before she snapped her fingers. I know! Taking off her hat, she tapped her fingers along the brim. Round two, stand up if you like. Her hand disappeared into the well of the hat. Magic tricks! Out came a bunny held by its ears. The crowd leaped to its feet, cheering and clapping, raising their arms over their heads in excitement. The barker smiled up all of them. All right, that's more like it. Everybody sit back down. Once everyone was seated once more, the barker dropped the bunny back into the hat and replaced it atop her head. She leaned on the her cane and tapped her chin, thinking hard about something. Then she gasped and said, Round three. Tammy leaned forward. This game was far more fun than she expected it to be. Maybe it was because she was surrounded by so many excited people, but she could hardly keep still. She fidgeted in her spot and giggling, but when she glanced over at Trevin, she saw he wasn't even cracking a smile. She frowned and leaned over to whisper something to him. What's wrong? He glanced at her briefly before his body tensed. I don't know, he whispered back. The barker then spoke again. Stand up if you ever stolen from your mom's purse. There was a drastic shift in the barker's tone when she spoke. That once joyful voice that sang to Tammy when she first arrived now sounded cold and sharp, like whoever was behind it had gone and break and left some alien in her place. As a confused murmur settled across the crowd, a chill went down Tammy's spine. The Barker's grin disappeared. Nobody? She asked. Nobody made a move to stand. She hummed softly. Hmm, well, some of you truly are good children, while others are filthy, rotten liars. But don't worry, they won't taint you. Suddenly, screams rang out all over the barn in the limited light. Tammy what soft wailing limbs and children scrambling away from them kicking them away it lasted only a minute before a cold silence fell across the crowd once more round four said the barker it felt like all the warmth had left tammy's body at once she barely breathed as the barker stood still as stone on the stage the spotlight overhead making her seem to almost glow in a low, breathy voice, she said, Stand up if you've ever broken an expensive vase. This time, a couple of children scrambled to their feet, trembling so hard that Tammy could see even the children farthest from her were shaking like leaves in a hurricane. The Barker's eyes scanned the area slowly, and then her upper lip quivered into a sneer. Some of you haven't learned. This time... Tammy saw it, a girl in front of her with pink bows in her hair and wild flowers weaved into her braids. The children beneath her melted into a dark, goopy black and she sank into it. She reached for her friend next to her, but he scrambled away in horror. Afraid he might be dragged down with her, she crawled at the hay, at the dirt. She shrieked so high that Tammy's ears rang. She 
fought until the last bit of her fingertips disappeared into the earth. And then the ground returned to normal and everyone was again left in the chilling silence. Those who were standing slowly sat back down. Tammy wanted to cry and scream and run home and vomit. Everything felt horrible. She looked around the room for the candy man or the woman handing out balloons or for the elderly man watching over the petting zoo from a rocking chair only to find they all slumped to on the floor against walls and chairs as if upon the lights going out every muscle had stopped working and they had fallen over lifeless. Trevin grabbed her hand. Don't look, he said. It only gets worse. Round five. The Barker's voice came out slow and distorted. Her eyes be had rolled back into her head. Her knees bent inwards as she leaned to one side, her cane barely supporting her. Stand up if you talk back to your parents. More children stood this time. Tammy could hear someone crying distantly, but wasn't sure which direction it came was coming from. It felt both far away and right next to her at the same time, though the Barker had now had no pupils. Tammy could feel her gaze washing over her like a cold slime enveloping her body. An evasive substance wanted to wash away. You should all know better by your age, the Barker hummed, and Trevin screamed. No, no, I don't, I never. The blackness of the ground began to swallow him up. He kicked and wailed and fought, screaming at the top of his lungs and reached for Tammy. She tried to back away, but his hands clamped around her ankle, cold and clammy. She shrieked and reached for someone nearby to help. But everybody scrambled away just as she had done a moment ago. Just as she was sure she would be dragged in, her foot hit solid ground. Trevin continued to sink, but Tammy did not. Her hand clung to her a long moment before finally slipping away, and the blackness of the ground washed away, leaving Tammy alone with tears streaming down her face and a hand-shaped bruise on her leg. Round six, said the Barker. Tammy gagged and threw up cherry lollipop and buttered popcorn all over the ground where Trevin had just been. Her vision smeared, and she looked up at the barn walls. The once happy-looking cartoon animals were suddenly just blobs of cracked, peeling paint. The smell of fairy dust was replaced with the smell of dirt and her own vomit. The streamers were never there. There were just spider webs, long, abandoned, and dangling over the head the room spun Tammy threw up again standing up F you cheat on your homework time moves in slow motion children stood screams sounded but Tammy barely registered any of it she felt dizzy and sick she wanted to go home more than anything in the world nothing felt magical anymore it all felt real, painfully real, and she wished she could just get up and sprint as fast as she could away from there. Then, as she raised her hand to her face to sob into them, a little golden light appeared in front of her palm. She blinked at um, it a moment, clearing her eyes of tears, then watched as it flew up and buzzed around in circles around her head. She swallowed thickly and struggled to focus on it. Round seven, said the Barker, and collapsed on a heap on stage. There was a long pause, 
long enough for everyone to begin shifting in their seats and whispering to those nearby. Before she repeated, round seven. A longer pause. Tammy stared at the Barker's slim body in the spotlight. Smoke rose from it. First in skin, barely noticeable wisps, then gradually in visible streams rising from her clothes and skin. Seven. All that moved was her lips. A great plume of smoke drifted out. Then, all at once, the Barker was in flames. Children screamed and began standing up. Running away, but the ground opened up to swallow them into the darkness. The utter workers simultaneously combusted moments later. The Joining the Barker in this crackling finale, the firefly buzzed in Tammy's ear and she wailed into her hands. Stand up if you know the way out. The Barker's voice almost sounded human again, but it wasn't close enough. Though the whooshing of flames and the scent of burning flesh, Tammy heard sobbing from all directions at once. Not only her own voice, but everyone who remained and everyone who had ever attended the Bad Kids Festival. Please, the Barker's voice changed. Pleaded. Rising in pitch, one of you must know a way out. The flames spread from her body to the stage. The stage to the barn, the barn to, up to the hay, which within moments left all the children batting at their clothes with their hands and frantically clearing spaces to sit. Seven, the barker shrieked. Seven years I've been here. Tell me the way out. Tammy heard buzzing in her ear once more and without a second thought, she leaped to her feet and followed it. Her eyes closed. She opened her mouth to scream for a command for everyone to follow her. But never once did she look where she went. She followed the buzzing and the glowing shape behind her eyelids. Sprinting as fast as she could, she felt heat and flame graze her body. She heard the cracking of boards and the... Barker shrieks as the barn collapsed and the festival ended. <coughs> when Tammy finally opened her eyes, she saw she was running through the cornfield she had sprinted through to get here in the first place. She heard several people running behind her, telling her either she hadn't made it out alone or she was being followed. She made a silent plea to the fireflies to guide her and the archer on home safely and followed her own buzzing little friend with all her might. Her entire body felt heavy and gross, but she forced herself to keep going for fear of what would happen if she stopped. She exited the cornfield alone. She leaped over the rocks and fences. She made a turn right, sprinted straight ahead until the asphalt broke into gravel beneath her toes. She kept running. The firefly disappeared the moment her shoes hit the gravel of her front lawn. And there she finally stopped and stood, staring, breathing heavily. The house stood just as she had left it, white and pretty. Climbing back through her window, she saw Jack still asleep, though now he faced the wall. She changed out of her Sunday clothes and hung them up as she had them before, leaving as if they had been there all night. She put on her nightgown, brushed her teeth, and climbed into bed where she fell asleep nearly instantly and had nightmares of fairies bursting into flames before her eyes. The next day, 
Tamra woke to Jax shaking her when she rolled over to look at him. All he said was breakfast before turning and leaving the room. She got out of bed, dressed in her school clothes, then went to the dining room where her foster mother was putting sausage eggs and toast on a plate for her. She climbed into her chair and began eating slowly as her stomach still felt upset. She nearly inhaled a bite of toast when her foster father, who had been sitting silently reading the paper and drinking his coffee until now, asked, Did you sleep well, Tamra? Tamra paused, thinking hard. She remembered the Bad Kids Festival, playing, meeting Trevin, and telling him that everyone would forget it all within a few days. Past that, she couldn't remember a thing. It all blurred together in her head. I slept just fine, thank you, Mr. Owens. She replied. He smiled at her from over the paper, so she smiled back at him. Mom says I have to walk you home after school today, Jack said th through a mouthful of scrambled eggs. Find me at the front once you we get out, okay? Okay, said Tamara. Will you wait by the oak tree with the yellow ribbon on it? Jack nodded at her as he sipped his orange juice, accidentally spilling some on his shirt. That day at school, Tamara was as good as can be. She did not notice the number of children who did not come to class. She paid attention and did wonderfully on a spelling test. When she showed to Jax upon meeting him under the oak tree, he told her she did a good job. Then the two started home. It was a short walk as their town was small and they were lucky enough to live close by. As they turned down the street, Jack stopped her in front of the house on the corner. Wait here, he said. My friend didn't come to school today and I have to bring him some homework. Tammy sat on the curb and waited as Jax walked up to the front door of the home. She wrapped up some grass and tied the blades together as she listened to them talking in distinguishly. When Jax came back down the lawn, he was frowning. He grabbed Tamara roughly by the arm and yanked her and kept walking. She whined and wrenched her arm away. What's your deal, butthead? He wasn't there, Jax replied. Tamara went quiet as Jax walked more quietly. She noticed his hands were shaking. Trevin wasn't there. His voice shook too. Jax went straight to his room when he walked in, slamming his door hard enough that Tamara felt it in her shoes. Miss Owens came to greet her and Tamara showed her the spelling test. Mrs. Owens clapped her hands and pinned it to the fridge as Tamara smiled up at her foster mother. She made up her mind to be very good and as honest as she could possibly be. She felt those things were very important. She couldn't wait to follow the fireflies next year.